Imagine a creature that can see behind sharp corners, hear a whisper from a mile away, or smell a gas without ever coming in contact with it. This creature is a robot equipped with active sensors, instruments capable of unprecedented vision, hearing, and olfaction. This new generation of robots has sensors that even a superhero would envy, and they are able to learn and behave autonomously thanks to artificial intelligence. So are people justified to fear these robots and worry that artificial intelligence will replace them? Before we fear them, let us understand them. Active sensors send beams of light or sound into the environment and then collect and measure the reflected signal after it has bounced off an object, like an echo. Similar to active sensors, dolphins and whales use beams of sound to communicate underwater at very long distances. In water, sound propagates much better than in air. Leonardo da Vinci was the first to observe this phenomenon. In 1490, he writes that if you cause your ship to stop and place the head of a long tube to your ear, and the other extremity in the water, you will hear ships at a great distance from you. Dolphins and whales use a mechanism called echolocation, very similar to active sonar. They send out rapid clicks through their nasal sacs. Did you hear that? Using their round forehead, the sound is focused and sent out as a beam through the water. Sound waves are reflected off objects back to the animal, where this information is received by the lower jaw and used by the brain to create a mental picture. Active sonar is a man-made sensor that functions very much like dolphin echolocation and can build images of underwater objects and environments by propagating sound waves to the side or in front of the sensor. The very first sonar was invented as a direct consequence of the loss of the Titanic in 1912 to allow ships to detect icebergs two miles away. With similar principles, a new generation of cameras called femtocameras, described by Ramesh Raskar in his TED talk, are able to see objects behind corners by emitting light pulses in a very focused direction and then capturing the light returned from the scene. Besides not being able to see behind corners, humans and other animals can only see in a very limited uh, region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Human vision is limited to three bands perceived as red, green, or blue, or RGB. While some birds and bees can also see ultraviolet light, which allows them to better find nectar. Engineers are now building hyperspectral cameras that can focus on narrow bands anywhere in the spectrum to see individual chemicals, in some cases, all the way from space. With these cameras, it is possible to visualize a gas concentration and detect harmful leaks of gas, such as methane or carbon monoxide, without ever coming in physical contact with the gas. When combined with machine learning algorithms, these amazing sensors can see, hear, and smell what only very few animals or humans can. For example, let us see what we can do with a conventional RGB camera, such as the one on your smartphone, used here to film this very friendly puppy. <laughs> Using a convolutional neural network, the camera can perform object recognition and recognize the glasses, the person, and eventually 
the dog in this video <laughs> with a confidence between zero and one. Using an interest point detector or deep learning, a camera can recognize actions such as a person waving in a number of poses and scenarios. Using methods known as particle filters, a camera can track a rapidly moving object such as this bicycle and even predict its future trajectory. We feature uh, tracking algorithms that track facial features, such as mouth and eyebrows. It is possible to recognize emotions, as seen here by a driver who is at first surprised and later becomes happy. Other emotions, such as sadness, fear, or disgust, can also be recognized. In this work, the emotions of the driver were used to adjust the response of the automobile accordingly, making it slower or peppier depending on the driver's mood. Imagine now placing sensors with these capabilities on a moving robot, such as this RoboBee, fabricated by the Harvard Microrobotics Lab. We're working toward placing a micro RGB camera, as well as other tiny sensors on micro robots like the RoboBee. Using Wi-Fi, the robot will be able to communicate with other robots, humans, and a central computer that can perform the heavy computation. Such a robot could assist humans in search and rescue operations. For example, helping rescuers find an injured hiker in a place that is otherwise inaccessible to humans, such as the caves of the Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah. Working with the human rescuer and using its onboard camera, the robot can search for the lost hiker. by flying through the crevices and caves and using object recognition software, the robot can find and recognize the lost hiker and report his location back to the rescuer. A ground vehicle equipped with a gas sensor or a hyperspectral camera can be used to monitor an industrial plant, for example, before or after a chemical or even a nuclear accident. Artificial intelligence algorithms on the robot can use information obtained by the gas sensor to guide the robot and allow it to find the source of the dangerous gas safely and rapidly among many possible locations. So this can allow the operators of the plant to monitor an environment without being exposed to the dangerous toxins. As another example, an unmanned underwater vehicle or UUV, such as this, can be equipped with an active sonar and used to search the ocean for a sunken ship or aircraft. Using a mechanism similar to echolocation, the UUV can build images of the ocean floor at distances and depths where the lack of natural light and bottom conditions prevent any other sensor or camera from seeing anything at all. We are nearing a time when robots can put thoughts into action. In other words, the robots can now perceive the world around them, the people, the animals, and the objects. They can use that information to construct mental models of this world, as humans have been proven to do based on their five senses. And importantly, robots can now act upon the perceived mental models of the world. Because learning and perception are such crucial aspects of human consciousness, 
As researchers, we must ask ourselves, what type of consciousness should these machines have? Currently, scientists and engineers are the ones who decide what type of parameters robots use for perception. For example, they can decide for the robot to use parameters similar to those used by humans, as in the case of artificial neural networks. Additionally, scientists decide how these parameters are learned and from what data. Perception parameters may be learned by two methods, supervised training and reinforcement learning. Supervised training is similar to how we teach students in the classroom. Namely, you study, study, everything your teacher tells you to, <laughs> and on the day of the test, you're presented with a problem. Then the teacher shows you the correct answer in order to modify your future response. In reinforcement learning, the perceptual algorithm learns to adjust its parameters based on a reward or a penalty. Like a boyfriend who picks the right gift may receive a kiss, one who doesn't may end up doing the dishes. In the case of a robot, the scientist decides the value system by specifying what behaviors deserve positive or negative reinforcement. Therefore, the scientist is kind of like a parent. We're rapidly approaching a point when robots can perceive so much of what humans and animals do, predict their intentions, and even interact in much more natural ways using verbal communication and gesticulation, which would be good for Italians like me who like to talk with their hands. <laughs> For example, this drone was trained to recognize these glasses and take off. It was also trained to follow the person who waves at it. and land nearby. So if humans and robots are going to be working closely together in more and more aspects of their daily lives, we must also ask ourselves, should these robots perceive the world as we do, or will humanity perhaps be better served by having a new and different perspective? I believe humans will be better served by robots that can complement rather than replace their capabilities. For example, by seeing or hearing wavelengths that are invisible or inaudible to humans and by exploring environments that are inaccessible to humans. Like humans, robots do make mistakes, as we have seen from our object recognition algorithm. <laughs> and they are easily tricked. <laughs> but unlike humans, robots do not have feelings and do not have a conscience. Therefore, they will never be able to replace human characteristics such as empathy, self-awareness, or remorse. These robots will not be better than we are, and this is reassuring. They are and will continue to be flawed like we are. But as humans, we will have the opportunity to welcome change, acquire a new perspective, and accept robots and artificial intelligence into our daily lives, teaching them how to work collaboratively to better our future. <laughs> Grazie, Verona.